Hey there! I am back today and I'm doing a new type of video that's more on the educational side because it's summer, the sun's shining, the rays are hitting your face and if you're anything like me, you want some extra protection. <sighs> Slash are terrified of the sun. Hmm. You'll notice this is slightly a different color than my usual tea, and I don't like it. It's a decaffeinated green tea, and I also have half of a watermelon. Anyway, let's get back to what I'm here to talk to you today about, which is nutrition and how it plays a role in sun protection. So maybe this is a controversial topic and I always kind of had my idea that nutrition did provide some added benefits, specifically in the antioxidant department, but I hadn't done a lot of research around this. It was based on conjecture and personal anecdotes that I saw on YouTube. A couple of them have kind of explicitly mentioned that they don't use sunscreen at all and that they just rely on their fruit intake to do the job. So I wanted to investigate this a little bit and bring it to you. Uh, while your diet can provide some added protection from UV rays, it should not replace sunscreen, which is your first line of defense against harmful UVA and UVB rays that reach the earth. These create what is called free radicals, but are more specifically reactive oxygen species. Where was I? Essentially what these are, they're radicals. They are in the sense that they don't have a paired electron. They're atoms or groups of atoms without a paired electron. These oxygen radicals can damage DNA and deplete fats and lipids in the skin that can result in aging of the skin and even cancers. So today I'm going to go through some of the best foods that you can eat based on the research to provide an extra level of defense from the sun. I'm going to talk about plants in particular because they contain chemicals known as phytonutrients, which provides protection from extrinsic factors like bugs, fungus, and of course UV radiation. It's generally well accepted that these nutrients can make their way into the various layers of the skin and provide similar levels of protection to our bodies. So there is a growing body of research that's really looking into the role that phytonutrients and vitamins and minerals found in plants can contribute to the prevention of skin aging and photoprotection in general, including protection from cancers caused by UV radiation. Of the human studies that I've come across, it always seems to be the case that topical application is always more effective than oral administration. Still, it seems that both the application topically and oral supplementation is the most effective way to provide that extra protection from UV radiation and oxidative stress. To add on to that, dietary supplementation takes longer to show efficacious results, typically from anywhere from 10 weeks to 12 weeks. It should be noted that the safest way to obtain these nutrients is from whole food sources. And that's because once you start supplementing with, you know, like over the counter supplements, you actually run the risk of uh, creating toxicity in the body. And some of these sources can even turn into pro oxidants. So the best way to control for that and prevent that is to eat them from whole food sources like plant foods specifically because they come in a perfect package. So just to start off, we're going to talk about the most well-researched phytonutrient. The one that has the most attention in scientific research is lycopene. Tomatoes seem to get the most attention overall. Research shows that the bioavailability of lycopene is increased once the food is cooked and also with the addition of healthy fat like olive oil. So in one study where, a where participants ingested 40 grams of tomato paste daily, which equates to 16 milligrams of lycopene per day, along with 10 grams of olive oil over a period of 10 weeks showed that this type of intervention led to a 40% reduction in skin erythema, which is the inflammation caused by UV radiation. So other studies have sh have confirmed these results using tomato paste in particular with olive oil, showing that lycopene has the ability to control the level of MMP in the skin, which is one of the culprits of breakdown of collagen, of the breakdown of collagen and elastin as we age. MMP is the matrix metalloprot metalloproteinases matrix metalloproteinase matrix metalloproteinase and in addition 
They show the ability of lycopene to prevent mitochondrial DNA damage, which is another underlying cause of aging and also skin cancer. Aside from tomatoes, other excellent sources of lycopene include guava, which is one of the highest sources of lycopene, and also watermelon, which is why I'm eating it today. In addition to these three, there's pink grapefruit and red bell peppers. Okay, let's like move on now. I've had enough of lycopenes. Let's talk about beta carotene. It's also in the carotenoid family. It's actually a provitamin, which means that it's converted into a vitamin within the body once ingested. Human studies have demonstrated its efficacy in preventing erythema when exposed to UV damage. And, and similarly to lycopene, it's also quite effective at quenching singlet oxygen, a form of free radical oxygen. So it's also quite good at preventing um, signs of aging. In the case of beta carotenes, pairing them with healthy fats can also aid in absorption, similar to lycopenes where we saw they used olive oil in the tomato paste studies. There you go. So some good sources are cantaloupes. I love those. I eat them in the same way as my watermelons. Carrots, papayas, mangoes, sweet potatoes, and squash. So a lot of these uh, fruits and vegetables that have a more orangey flesh color, and also dark leafy greens like kale and spinach. Okay, let's move on to vitamin C, which is a hot one, of course, in serums, but we're talking about food. Vitamin C, which is scientifically known as L-ascorbic acid, it's, is the only active form of vitamin C. It can only be attained through the diet. Vitamin C is not naturally synthesized by the human body. Actually, studies that use vitamin C alone did not show any increase in photoprotection, but when coupled with vitamin E in the diet, they did. Researchers found that oral administration of both vitamin E and vitamin E, <laughs> vitamin C and vitamin E, um, can protect against hazardous effects of UV radiation and skin cancer. So vitamin C and E are known to act synergistically or well together. So you should make sure to get adequate amounts of both in your diet. Foods that are high in vitamin C include the kakadu plum, an Australian fruit that is in one of my sunscreens actually, which I have no idea where to find the actual fruit, but apparently it's like a really tart plum or something like that. I don't know. There are rose hips, which are the sweet tangy fruit found on the rose plant, chili peppers, guava, kale, broccoli, strawberries, and of course, citrus fruits. And in terms of vitamin E, you can get good amounts from sunflower seeds, almonds, avocados, spinach, and olive oil. So a lot of the healthy fat foods, but also like some leafy greens like spinach. And the last food I'm going to talk about today is, and I don't know if you've guessed it, but it's green tea, which I featured in every single one of my videos. This one I'm drinking today is kind of nasty, but I might have just let it steep too long. So let me tell you a little bit more about it. So they're rich in antioxidants and green tea is an abundant source of polyphenols, which is a phytonutrient group and can be further broken down into different families. Green tea has a high level of cat catechins. Catechins, is that how you say it? Catechins. Catechins. Catechins are just notoriously known for being able to quench reactive oxygen species. Green tea is the most abundant source of catechins um, ahead of even chocolate and grapes and apples. So that's why we're talking about it right now. And there are lots of topical studies to show its efficacy in preventing sun damage by, you know, scavenging some of those free radicals. But more recently, in the last decade specifically, there's been a growing number of human studies showing its efficacy in preventing photoaging and also uh, preventing UV-induced erythema, you know, with, in, with prolonged ingestion, of course. In addition to the sun protection, Many studies have shown its ability to increase collagen and elastin fiber in the skin, as well as suppress those MMPs that contribute to the breakdown of collagen and elastin as we get older. So for example, there was a 12-week double-blind placebo-controlled 
study done on 60 volunteers where the focus group consumed a green tea beverage every day, which totaled to 1,402 milligrams of catechins. So the researchers used a solar simulator to examine the effects of UV radiation on the skin. They showed that the UV-induced erythema was significantly decreased in the focus group. And they also noted improvements in the elasticity of the skin, the roughness, scaling, and density. Yeah, so like, really cool. There are a couple of other noteworthy nutrients that I did not mention, and it's because there are just not as many human studies around them. And actually, I couldn't really find any that involved oral administration of resveratrol and curcumin. Resveratrol, of course, is abundantly found in grapes and red wine. Curcumin is found in turmeric. And of course, I want to just reiterate that this should not replace your sunscreen, which is your first line of defense. It should just be another layer of defense against nasty photo aging. Also, I just want to also reiterate because I know sometimes these things can get a little dense and then you forget or you just skipped it. The research has shown that the photoprotective properties of these foods don't really start to show until 10 weeks or more, or sometimes 12 weeks, like in the case of the green tea. So you wanna get started early and you wanna sustain this, you know, throughout the entire year, not just in the summer. Um, make sure you're getting adequate, <laughs> adequate vitamins and minerals because your body actually requires them to function properly, not just for the, you know, youthfulness of your skin. You need vitamins and minerals for proper bodily function. So in my opinion, the best way to get these are directly from the source, from plant foods. Other people eat animals, I get that. And animals ultimately, you know, if we go down the food chain, get their nutrition from plants. So it's, it's really, you know, whatever works best for you. I definitely advocate for a plant-based diet, but I'm not trying to preach. Um, I'm really glad I was able to make that video because it's been on my mind for a while now and I just didn't really know how to articulate it. So I wanted to do the research and really come up with something. So I hope it wasn't boring and stuff, but let me know. Should I just stick to sunscreen videos and like stop trying? Sorry for talking with my mouth full. I didn't learn manners. If you like my content, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and of course, Thumbs up. Would love if you could do that. And yeah, oh, follow me on Instagram. Okay, bye.